Before we begin, um, I did want to acknowledge that April 26th was Administrative Professionals Day, and April 30th to May 6th is Professional Municipal Clerks Week. Um, as a part of which, I want to acknowledge all the professionals across our corporation. Much of the work they do is behind the scenes, so they don't get half the credit that is reserved of them. And because uh, they all work in public sector, they don't hear a thank you nearly enough. Personally, I want to thank our clerk, Jen. Since joining the Kirkland Lake team, <clears throat> she has not only brought a strong work ethic um, and true devotion to our community, but also a light and kindness to our office. She is diligent in everything she does for our community and ensures we're always on track. So I am deeply, deeply thankful for her presence here with us. I encourage member of the public, staff and council to take a moment to celebrate these individuals who continue to work so hard for our community and thank them all. Welcome. Okay. Call to order the regular council meeting of Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023 at 4.40 p.m. in council chambers and via Zoom. We acknowledge that the town of Kirkland Lake is located on the traditional territory of Algonquin peoples, including Beaver House First Nation and unceded territory of other Indigenous peoples. We recognize the presence of the Algonquin, Onishawabe, Ojibwe, Cree, and Métis people in our community since time immemorial and honor their stewardship and care of these lands. We hereby affirm our continued commitment and responsibility to reconciliation. We'll have a moment of silence. Approval of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Janice Granger, seconded by Councillor Vlad Shaba, be it resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of Council held on Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023, be approved as circulated. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Declaration of pecuniary interest. Councillor Ranger. I have two for tonight. I, Janice Ranger, am declaring direct uh, right, pecuniary interest on the agenda. Of the meeting dated May 2nd, 2023, in open session. Agenda item number 6.4, agenda title Community Grant Funding Application, Rotary Club of Kirkland Lake. It is indirect as I am a member of the body. Uh, nature of my interest is as follows I am a Rotarian. A second declaration I, Janice Ranger, am declaring direct, deemed, or indirect pecuniary interest on the agenda of the meeting dated May 2nd, 2023, in open meeting. Agenda item number 7.1, agenda title considerations of notices and motion, Northern College Skills Development form of funding. It is direct as the matter may potentially affect my finances. The nature of my interest is as follows. I am an employee of Northern College. Thank you. Councillor Dykins. I, Dolly Dykins, am declaring an indirect pecuniary interest on the agenda of the meeting dated May 2nd, 2023. And open meeting, agenda item 7.1, agenda title, Northern College Skills Development Form of Funding. It is indirect as I am an employee of the body with pecuniary interest. Uh, the nature of my interest is as follows. I am an employee of Northern College. Thank you. I, Stacey White, am declaring indirect pecuniary interest on the agenda meeting dated May 2nd, 2023, in open meeting item number 6.3, agenda title, Community Grant Funding Application, Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 87. It is indirect as I am a member of a body. The nature of my interest is as follows. I was sworn in as a Legion member on Friday, April 28th. And as such, do not wish to vote on this item due to the, my affiliation with this group. Thank you all. Item number four, petitions and delegation. I'll call up Karen Armstrong and Leo Tatequipit from Community Living, Kirkland Lake.
Hi. So I'm Karen. And I and I am the Ohio Public. <laughs> so we're here, of course, on behalf of community living. Um, and first of all, I would like to thank Mayor White for declaring May as Community Living Month. It's nice to see our flag flying outside. And uh, we're looking forward to hosting you all at our meet and greet on May 18th at 1130. So I hope you all can make it. And this year we're celebrating 76 years of providing support to the town of Kirkland Lake. And now since some of our COVID restrictions have been lifted, we have some events that we planned for the month of May to celebrate. We are having out the hours at the Martin Twist from nine and uh, until. until 11 a.m. to on Mother's Day. We are having a yoga in the park. Okay. Uh, session. Session, yeah. Uh, at the Kenwas Park. On May 17th, from 1 p.m. to 1.50 p.m., we are hosting, hosting a barbecue from at, the, at 11 to, to 2 p.m. Okay. On the 27th, at the Enwas Park. Okay, and also along with that too, uh, we just found out we're going to be uh, partnering with the Alzheimer's Society during our barbecue, and they're doing a walk in a couple uh, local areas this year at the same date, so uh, we're going to be collecting donations and having some individuals walk around with some prizes and stuff like that, so that'll go on at the same time. And we're also hosting a bowling tournament with our Special Olympians taking on local celebrities on May 30th at 6 p.m. And we're still looking for some local celebrities, so if anybody would like to join, just let us know. It should be lots of fun. And we also have a few exciting surprises that will be showing up on our Facebook page, so uh, please follow us along. And it's under Community Living in Kirkland Lake. We are encouraging all the to come out to our yoga in the park and our barbecue, it will be great to have the support of the, to help the promote the And I'm going to give you a sneak peek on our announcement that we'll meet on our Facebook page tomorrow. We're launching our new mission statement. So it includes our beliefs, our values, and explains why our organization exists, really. And it reads, Community Living Kirkland Lake encourages and supports persons with intellectual disabilities and their families to ensure that everyone may be actively involved in all aspects of life in our community with full acceptance, dignity, and independence. So it's very inspiring to read. We strive to have full acceptance and that's why we're celebrating this month. We wanna be known positively in the town of Kirkland Lake and to have others join us on our celebration to become aware of the people that we support and to be comfortable in accepting us when we're out and about in the community. So also, I'm going to leave some calendars too with our events here for you guys. We would like to thank the mayor, counters, and the whoever town of Cochrane Lake from helping us achieve, achieve our thank you. <laughs> Achieve our goals. Achieve our goals. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.
Any questions or com comments from council? Council mm -hmm. Owen? Yes, to you, worship to uh, presenters. Um, your organization has an amazing track record in town. Um, I've had many enjoyable coffees with, uh, I don't know if you call them clients, but really it's more your family. Yeah, uh, they have people who are uh, they're, they're certainly uh, well accepted, in, in my opinion, in the community. And I think that's something all of Kirkham Lake should be proud of. And if you remind me, I will allow my name to stand for that celebrity bowling on May 30th. Absolutely, 100%. Because I want to get together with some of the people I know from your organization to see, if, to see if they can beat me. <laughs> and they're pretty good. I, 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 I bet they are. <laughs> so, yes, thank for you sure. for coming today. And I think, you know, uh, it, it's amazing how well I believe that you're, you're well, I'll call them family members, really, are accepted in the community. And looked at it for, and, and you know, they bring a lot of laughs. Yeah. And the happiness. Yeah. Thank you. Anything further from council? I do want to thank you both for coming, Leo and Karen. We do appreciate you sharing your information. And um, this month is um, a particular interest to me as a former member of the Community Living Family. One thing that I don't think members of the public realize is when they say they're celebrating 76 years of support in Kirkland Lake, it literally means because of members of the Kirkland Lake um, community 76 years ago, we have community living Ontario. Yeah. Without the work that was done in our community and our community alone, this body wouldn't exist. So that is definitely something that we should all be proud of. And we thank you for coming and sharing that information with us today. Thank you. And we will see you lots this month. Thank so thank you very much. I'll have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Dolly Dykins. Be it resolved that the delegation entitled Community Living Kirkland Lake Update be received for information. All in favor? Opposed? Mm -hmm. None noted. Item carried unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank Both you. Do. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you for the calendars. <laughs> <laughs>
continue into other health issues such as sarcoidosis and cardiovascular disease. These investigations look at the full range of mining exposures, not just McIntyre powder, as well as non-occupational risk factors for developing diseases. Compensation is available for mine workers with health conditions linked to the McIntyre powder or to other mining exposures, including survivor benefits for spouses and dependent children in cases where the worker has died. Next of kin can make WSIB claims on behalf of the estates of deceased workers. The funding, benefits, and supports that are available can be life-changing for mining families, but most people aren't even aware that they can make a workers' compensation claim or how to go about doing so. They need information and they need help. We didn't have that help when dad was struggling with Parkinson's. And now that compensation is available, I want other impacted families to know that they can get help and how to do so. It is deeply important to me that other families don't have to go through what our family went through at the end of dad's life. When I started the McIntyre Powder Project, I knew nothing about any of this, and it took a lot of time, effort, and expense to become informed. This week, I'm doing a series of free public information sessions in mining communities to share what I've learned and hopefully help affected mining families to make informed decisions. I'll be presenting here in Kirkland Lake tomorrow morning at the Legion, starting at 10 a.m., and anyone is welcome to come by and to learn more. And I thank you. Thank you. Any comments or questions from members of council? Oh, yep. Oh, sorry. Vlad, go ahead. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much, Janice. I don't think you remember me. Um, Vlad Shaba, local 653 president and region 6 PHRC. Uh, I know you know, you know all those uh, alphabet soup. I recall when you came to the convention, uh, up to convention, say you're starting this journey here. It's been a very long one, and thank you very much for your steadfastness, steadfastness, and your activism on this. I wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Allen? Yes, to you, Mayor, to our presenter. Um, I followed you on CTV for a number of years now, and I just want to thank you um, for the work you've done. Lung disease runs in my family. Fortunately, none of us were minors, but. Uh, that's, I think, why I followed the work you were doing so closely. And it's very important work because without you, no one would be getting compensated for the powder. And I think I also want to express the fact that more than just the people that are compensated, other people in the public, like myself, appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's meaningful. It's been a Okay, it's been a long, hard road. Yes. I've had some low moments. So um, just being welcomed in mining communities. And I just don't want anyone to go through what we went through. Yeah. We had no help. Yeah. And there's help available, and I want to help you. Councilor Kiley? Yeah, uh, great work. Uh, my father was a miner and suffered from uh, some courses. Uh, eventually did get uh, a bit of a uh, pension. Uh, late in, in years, unfortunately, to, to really enjoy it. But uh, the work that you've done is uh, is quite amazing, uh, especially for on your own. Uh, I don't think the minds got up and clapped when you when they saw you. <laughs> but uh, pretty much crickets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, uh, it's nice to see the. Uh, your efforts are starting to pay off. So, thank you. And there, thank thank you a, again. Thank you. There's a lot of people that stood up. I started my voluntary registry in 2015. And if nobody had stood up and said, yes, I was also exposed, nothing would have happened. And there's been good people like the steel workers and the occupational health clinics for Ontario workers that really carried the ball forward. So, uh, but yeah, you need somebody to stand up first. So. Anything further from council? I just want to thank you for your time today. I do appreciate, as a daughter of a minor myself, um, that you brought this forward and you you came today to speak um, at council and share this information with our community. Um, I do hope anyone um, listening tonight um, that is affected by any of these issues will go see you tomorrow at 10. Um, and with that, I will have the reading of the motion. 
Moved by Councillor Rick Owens, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley, be resolved that the delegation entitled McIntyre, Mike, sorry, McIntyre Powder Project update be received for information. All in favor? Opposed? None noted? Item carried. Thank, Thank you very much. much. <laughs> Item number 5.1. Minutes, Council, April 18, 2023. Moved by Councillor Janet Granger, seconded by Councillor Lodge Shaba. Did, oh, did Councillor Shaba have a second? Councillor Shaba, did you need to speak? No, no, not at all. No. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Lad Chaba. Be it resolved that Council approve the minutes of the following meetings. Minutes of the regular meeting of Council held April 18th, 2023. All in favor? Opposed? Item carry. Item 5.2. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that Council adopt the minutes of the following meetings. Minutes of the Kirkland Lake Museum Advisory Committee held June 1st, 2022 and August 3rd, 2022. All in favor? Opposed? None no. Oh, can I just, that? just um, yeah. through Mayor to Clerk, just for uh, clarity, do we adopt minutes previous or do we receive them? Like if it's from a previous council, it's just new. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, to all council. So you adopt, you approve the council minutes, you adopt any of the minutes of your respective committees of council, and you receive any outside agency. Okay. Um, so we can adopt the previous council. Thank yes. you. I'm for this. Sorry, um, we'll have the vote again. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. Item 5.3. Moved by Councillor Dory Dykin, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley, be it resolved that Council received the minutes of the following meetings. Minutes of the Kirkland Lake Public Library Board held February 16th, 2023. Minutes of the Temiskaming Municipal Association held January 26th and March 30th, 2023. And minutes of the Kirkland Lake Police Services Board held February 8th, 2023. All in favor? Opposed? Not noted. Item carried unanimous. Item number 6.1. 2023-2024, Connecting Links Program Funding Announcement. Sip Ann Forte, Director of Public Works. Good evening and thank you for having me. By the Mayor, Community Council. Uh, the Public Works Department has good news to share with you today. Um, the Town of Kirkland Lake has been selected for funding through the MTO's 2023-2024 Connecting Links Program. The project has an estimated value of a million dollars for which the funding covers 90% and the town is responsible for the other 10%. Now, the project itself is a rehabilitation of about 350 meters of government road from Birdside Drive to the east end limit of town. Uh, this will include the replacement of the asphalt, some replacement of the concrete curbs, gutters and sidewalks, and also the installation of a pedestrian crosswalk at the intersection of Burnside Drive and Governor uh, the broken, sorry, The project is broken down in two years. Year one, which is 2023, will be the design phase of the project, which is uh, has an estimated value of about $40,000, which our portion of that would be 10%, of about $4,000. And in 2024, that'll be our second phase, which will be the construction year. Now, this funding program is our main source of funding for our town's connecting link, which is Highway 66. Therefore, we do strongly encourage council to take full advantage of this funding opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments from members of council? And noted, I'll have the item read, please. Moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley. Be it resolved that report number 2023 PW5 entitled 2023-24 Connecting Links Program Funding Announcement for Kirkland Lake Project be received, and that the Mayor and Municipal Clerk be authorized to execute a contribution agreement and any related amendments proposed in favor of the municipality without detrimental financial impact with the Ministry of Transportation or designate for funding under the Connecting Links Program towards resurfacing of Government Road Highway 66, including pedestrian crosswalk improvements at Burnside Drive, 
also known as the project. Um, and that council approved the municipal portion, which is 10% of 2023 stage one projected costs and the issuance of a request for proposal for engineering services in relation to the said project. And that the municipal portion of the project to a maximum of $5,000 be allocated in the public works department's portion of the 2023 operating budget. And finally, that an execution by law in relation to the contribution agreement be brought forward at a later date. All in favor? Opposed? None. Sorry, Councillor Owen? Yes, this is sorry, Your Worship, to you, to Stefan. I didn't think of this question you know, was appropriate to ask, but do we know how old the infrastructure is underneath the, 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 that section of the highway? It's not something that I have personally looked at, but I, we could determine that. Well, what, what, uh, sorry, what I'm thinking is we have the money to do the top. That's part of what it would cost us to replace what's underneath at the same time. And I'm wondering if that is, in fact, very old infrastructure underneath. Maybe we should consider changing our 10 year plan and look at replacing those pipes while we've got part of the job paid for. Um, it's just a suggestion, and I don't know if it's feasible or anything else, but I just wanted to throw that out. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Owens. Through, um, through you, Madam Mayor, if I remember the conversation correct with Dixit at the time, and actually, this is far back when they first brought us, so there's no infrastructure to say. To speak up under that section. Yeah. Well, it runs off to the side. If I remember what yeah, actually happened, yeah, I, I, I just I throw yeah. that out there. I don't, I don't know. I probably could check with my son and find out. But I, I hope you're right. Sorry. That's okay. <clears throat> okay, so that will be investigated by staff and brought back. Um, as far as the motion concern is concerned, do we need the re reading of that motion before we vote? We didn't. We didn't, we didn't pass it because you questioned yeah. asked in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So well, we will not have a rereading of the motion, but we will revote. All in favor of the motion as presented? Opposed? None noted. Item carried. Thank you, sir. Item 6.2, Community Improvement Plan Funding Application, Free Government Road East, Wilford Haas, Director of Economic Development. Thank you, sir. Thank you through you, uh, Madam Mayor, to Council. Um, the Economic Development Committee met uh, last week and there were a number of items on the agenda. There, the next three items on your agenda have come from that meeting. The first one is with Three Government Road East. It's a request for funding under the Community Improvement Program. Periodification, again, it is money that uh, Council has set aside from a reserve fund that businesses can apply to that will enhance their businesses or contribute to the municipality or creating employment. In this case, uh, the application came from the chiropractic uh, business that is on Government Road, uh, Three Government Road West. The work entailed painting, of the interior, as well as uh, installation of a new floor. Contribution was that it does lower the cost of uh, operating the business in terms of not having to clean the carpets all the time. And it does make the uh, business more presentable as it is uh, doing very well. So the application was for 50% of funding incurred. That comes up to $2,086. Um, and that is the request that is before you with Free Government Road East. Any questions from Council? Councillor Owen? So all the work is on the interior? Then? Yes, it is. Anything further from Council? We'll have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Dennis Ranger. We have resolved that report number 2023 DAV 18 entitled Community Improvement Fund funding application three government road east be received and finally that council approved two thousand eighty six dollars in funding to be drawn from the community improvement plan reserve being fifty percent of eligible costs for building renovations and improvements to free government road east all in favor opposed none noted item carried unanimous at this time i'll have councillor casey owens take over as acting mayor
So item 6.3, Community Grant Funding, Royal Canadian Legion Branch 87. Uh, to you, Your Worship, uh, to Council, the next two items are applications under the Community Grant uh, Program for Council's application. It's a program that is established under the Economic Development uh, Budget, and it is uh, drawn directly from the uh, tax roll, um, taxes. It is $25,000 a year. We've had a pretty good uptake on this uh, this year. Legion 87 has applied to the program uh, in order to support the uh, installation and removal of uh, banners and uh, I always get it wrong, like a commemorative bowl banner installation and removal. It is money that uh, would be used to offset the cost of the town itself, would be applying to the Legion as uh, part of doing that job. So that uh, amount right now is at $1,500. Um, that's it. So, right. so basically, the town of Kirkland will be given the money to Legion and it's coming back to us to offset the cost of hanging these banners, right? Yes, it, technically, yes. And I hope that there's a few less exchanging of hands, but yes. So, and I don't know if this is the time to bring up this question, or when we pass the bylaw to set the price, the policy uh, for hanging the banners, just I think was an unintended consequence of that bylaw now the legion's got to pay every year to have these bangers hung up right yes uh the proponents that are uh bringing forward the uh the, the banners that they wish to hang uh according to the policy are responsible for paying the cost of doing so so the legion would have to come back every year to apply for this funding again Yes, unless they wish uh, to approach council in, uh, through a different manner, but at this point, the community grant program is established for that. It's the only mechanism available. Okay, I'll start with that. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes, to yes, so you, um, Chair. I think perhaps um, someone should approach the Legion to see if there is a more efficient way. Um, it's kind of a waste of staff time, council's time and Legion volunteers time to have to reapply each year. Um, it's just, I'm just throwing that out. It, it, I, it, I it, kind of agree, that's where I was going. Well, I I think go through. Yeah, no, I think that's where your head is. And I know, I know at the Legion that initially it did cause a little bit of hard feelings because they didn't understand, you know, they were getting billed and, and they said, well, you know, things like this always uh, being done. And, and, you know, I mean, it's out of respect for our service people. Um, so I'm wondering if, if maybe, I don't know who the appropriate staff person could approach the Legion and then make a report back to council. Does, could it come through council first or does it have to well, be initiated for that region? Go through you, Mr. Mr. Chair, yeah. and all of council. I can give some context in terms of the flagpole banner, the, the, the methodology of the thinking, the rationale behind it. Um, all organizations, if they wanted to have installation and implementation, were, that was the actual, it was less than what was actually going to cost public works to actually undertake the work for the installation and replacement. So without um, singling out a certain group or groups uh, in, in the town, uh, community grant program was identified as a mechanism for a subsidy if so wished to work. So if you wanted to change this mechanism, and I don't necessarily want to single out a group, but there's certain groups that do these individuals die for our country. I think it's the least we can do as a municipality if they hang up a banner. So can it be something that council initiates as an amendment to off of this, or do we have yeah. to bring it back? If it's if it's the route, if it's the will of council to um, want to amend this motion, uh, insofar as to have staff um, review the policy to bring a report back to council with uh, other options, then then we can do that. Certainly, that. Councilor, we'll just Councilor Dykin have her hand up early. Um, yeah, to you. Right there, Acting Chair. Acting Chair, thank you. Um, that was my question. Mm -hmm. It can be used by others through other groups through the year as well, right? I understand the dying for your country. I, I get that. But 
just want to be clear, like other groups can use it for the majority of the year, right? So just... I'm assuming yeah, other groups can come through the community grant uh, application program and ask for a grant. Uh, my concern is just this particular group. There's, I see that personally as, you know, with the, again, with the individuals back for our country, it's the least we can do as a municipality. That's how I believe. I can't bring the motion this way tonight. I bring it differently. Councillor, uh, uh, sorry, bring it. Are you acting mayor uh, to council? Um, so some other examples were when we had the 100th anniversary, when Northern College had their anniversary, they all had to put up banners. So there would be arguments put forward that any promotion would benefit the community and the tourism group. So I just caution, absolutely respect veterans and the process that you're trying to do. So my recommendation is we approve the motion as it stands now with an amendment that so that we can at least move forward with this year's and that there's nothing stopping it and that we have to request a, re a new report from okay. I just can't check. I can't. Yeah. That motion from are you, are you looking for um, a motion to amend? To approve with an amendment. To approve the, the motion as it stands, but with an amendment to get other options considered. Please. Okay. I mean, second, I just need to drop this up. If you yeah. can get a second, but yeah, there might be others that have any questions. Okay. So can we still ask the question while you're kind of... I'm listening, so yeah. Okay. Answer. Yeah, I'm sure you, acting chair. I've never considered the Legion similar to any other service group in this town. Um, I have the utmost respect for the people who serve our country. Um, Many of them come home to suffer silently because they chose to stand in front of opposing forces. Um, I don't care who belongs to the Legion now. I don't care who goes to the Legion. To me, this is out of respect for veterans. And when I look around the world today, I mean, you don't have to look too far. Ukraine, Africa, you know, we are so fortunate to live in this country. We are so fortunate to be able to run for this council and sit at this table and voice our opinions. And there is a long history between Branch 87 of the Royal Canadian Legion and the town of Curtin Lake Councils. And it is a very different relationship than it has with every other service group, church organization in the community. And it is out of that that I, I believe that we should make this easy, um, easier process and um, I'm not going to talk about. Yeah, because we're going to get off topic. Yeah, so, so, so I'm just going to drop it there. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. I can read the amendment. I'm just going to read the amendment. So it'll be that the resolution be amended to include and that staff bring forward an information report. The costing option associated with the full banner, uh, the town's full banner policy before the and further specifically for the region. Specifically for the region. Councilor Head, your second insult. Specifically regarding the Royal Canadian. But we, we will vote on the amendment first. So we'll vote on the amendment, all in favor? Carry. Okay, so now we're going to vote on the. We can call for the vote on the. And on the original motion, all in favor? Or, yeah, you want to read it again? I'll read okay, it. Okay, sir. So as it ended, it'll be all encompassing here. 
Moved by Councillor Rich Owen, seconded by Councillor La Chava. They resolved at report number 2023 DEV19 entitled Community Grant Funding Application for the Norwegian Branch A7 be received. And the council approved funding in the sum of $1,500 in support of the Legion's request for financial assistance related to commemorative pole banner installation and removal. And that staff bring forward an information report with costing options associated with the town pole banner policy, specifically regarding the Royal Community Legion. And finally, that the grant be drawn from the community grants program as included in the Economic Development Division's portion of the 2023 operating budget. On um, here. Thank you, Councillor Owens. Item number six point four community grant funding application. Rotary Club of Purple Lake, Wilbert Haas, Director of Economic Development. Thank you, Your Worship. That's for you. Uh, I'm sorry. It's been 20 years of saying it one thing. It's difficult. I, I mean it with respect. The next application is from the Rotary Club. Um, and the day celebrations are uh, being organized between the Rotary Club and the Lions Club. Uh, Lions Club is organizing the majority of the on the ground events. If I'm misrepresenting that, my apologies. Rotary Club is uh, organizing um, the fireworks and the entertainment. They have applied under a community grant of $5,000 towards this. Um, they are recognition of the municipality's contribution will likely help them uh, secure fu uh, funding and assistance from other groups in the municipality. Uh, should that be the case, they may be spending more on um, the entertainment, well, not so much entertainment, but the fireworks, uh, depending on, again, what uh, the uptake is from the community. But at this point, the $5,000 is uh, will go a long way to ensuring that the event does happen as uh, planned and that it could grow in the future. It is the first one since uh, COVID, uh, first in-person uh, celebration. So I think it's very important for the community and certainly for the uh, organization. Again, the request is for $5,000. Any questions for members of council? Any statements? None noted. I'll have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be resolved that report number 2023 DEV20 entitled Community Grant Funding Application Rotary Club of Kirkland will be received. And the council approved funding in the sum of $5,000 in support of Rotary's request for financial assistance related to the 2023 Canada Day celebrations. And finally, that the grant be drawn from the Community Grants Program as included in Economic Development Division's portion of the 2023 operating budget. All in favor? Opposed? Not noted. Item carried. Thank you, sir. Item 6.5 proposed updates to Town of Purple Lake user fees. Jennifer Montoy, Municipal Clerk. Thank you, and for you, Madam Chair, at a high level, because I don't think anybody wants a summary of 10 pages of report. Uh, administration have undertaken a comprehensive review of the various schedules associated with the town's user fees bylaw as amended. As noted within the report, the setting of user fees uh, allows the cost of services to be equally distributed amongst users and the public, uh, thereby reducing the town's reliance on property taxes as a primary funding source. This evening, town departments and divisions have presented before you various changes, removals, and additions to user fees. The rationales have been encapsulated in the report. Professional judgment and local indirect direct impacts and economic factors related to service delivery have been considered in keeping schedules current. Certain fees are proposed below the norms of local and similar size municipalities in keeping with council's direct direction in enhancing local investment in Kirkland Lakes business community. Uh, the proposed changes enable administration to continue to provide residents, users, and the business community with the services they expect from the town. Uh, keeping the user fees bylaw current is in, is in keeping with all four pillars and various corporate actions as noted in the town's strategic plan, uh, specifically noted in the alignment to strategic priorities section of the report. Uh, in terms of the user fee schedules themselves, 
We'll note that those uh, included as part of your report are being displayed in a more accessible format for the repair or user, as well as in a format that will assist administration in change management proposals to council moving forward. So to assist in council deliberation uh, and, and the public's uh, departmental divisional fees are identified as their own separate schedule to the bylaw now um, and are to include page numbering. Where service is no longer active or offered, it is to be removed, it is struck out, and the word removed is identified. Where a new service is proposed, it is identified with the word new and the fee is located in the proposed fee column. And where a previous a previously established user fee is being proposed to be amended, the proposed fee is also identified in that same column. It should be noted that minor typographical errors were appended to directly and are not identifiable on these presented schedules in front of you. Administration is proposing that the updated bylaw and established user fee schedules take effect June 1st. Prior to approvals taking place, a public meeting must be held in accordance with the town's notice bylaw. This helps ensure the process for establishing user fees is transparent and reasonable. It is being proposed that that public meeting take place on Tuesday, May 16th at 540. At the onset of the regular meeting, subject to the public meeting held for the 2023 budget. If it is the will of council to proceed with a public meeting, the clerk's office will coordinate comments in written format, either letter mail or email, prior to the public meeting, which will be read during the public meeting. Um, any members of the public wishing to speak or present at the public meeting will be asked to attend the meeting in person. Those interested in joining digitally will be required to contact my office. If any person attends digitally, they'll be provided with the opportunity to speak in priority to remove any issues with technology because we don't have those here. Of course, in technology, if technology is an issue, comments will be welcomed in writing for those registered individuals. And comments received from council this evening will be responsive and a supplemental report which will be prepared for council's consideration on May 16th. Public comments and the discussion of council will drive further reports on June 6th, including the presentation of a bylaw, if so recommended on May 16th. That is my presentation, Madam Chair. Various members of our administration are present this evening to address the questions from council that are specific to the respective departments or divisional user fee schedules in front of you. Thank you. Any questions from Councillor? Councillor Ranger? To me, Madam Mayor, to uh, my slack writer, could I ask my a question? I just want to know, has it ever been considered um, to have a user fee for some of our uh, parks and specialty locations, such as Fireman's Park in Swastika, or the Splash Park for usage for parties and special events? Oh, good question. <laughs> Through you, Councillor. Um, Through you, Madam Mayor, too, Councillor. Um, we do have the availability to rent any of the park space for private birthday rentals. Um, so let me rephrase that, to use any of the park space for private birthday rentals. So we encourage families who want to use a splash park or a playground to feel free to go ahead and use it. We don't section off those areas and have private rentals. We haven't in the past. The only areas that we've done private rentals for would be at Civic Park. So would it be something that um, your department could consider is um, charging a user fee to produce some revenue for those that want to use specifically I'm, I've had experience with Fireman's Park mm -hmm. and there being multiple people trying to use it for events at the same time so there's no like priority of you you know I have a piece of permit a piece of paper and a permit and I pay for usage of this and or the splash park or other this may be something that others are not in favor of but I want to I want it to be considered. Madam, yeah, Madam, Madam Mayor, you, this is not the norm, right? Um, Madam Mayor, through you to all council, there might be some zoning implications in terms of park uh, associated with the ability to um, bar certain, certain, or to allow for certain, only certain groups to access park on. So I think that the planning department should probably be involved mm -hmm. in such an uh, undertaking. Mm -hmm. Councillor mm -hmm. sure. Owens? Um, I understand the user bylaw is or fees is to recover some of our costs because contrary to popular belief, we can't run a municipality as a business. Uh, we're here to offer quality of life to our residents and run it for profit uh, or as a business would just be detrimental, I think, to residents. So we need to keep that in mind. That being said, 
The one I have the most issues with is the fire department's charge of the $20 for the burning, burning permit. Uh, up until this year, the fire department used to come to our houses to inspect the fire pit, make sure we were okay. Now we need to go to the fire hall yeah. to get that piece of paper and there's no inspection process done whatsoever. It's now the onus is on the homeowner to make sure, hey, this is the list of criteria. You make sure you follow it. And until we get a complaint from somebody, we're not going to go and see you. So I don't think there's a cost recovery needed for this one. So I don't, especially this year with taxes going up, um, water rates going up, everything going up. I think it's something we need. If we want to consider down the road for this year, we can give our residents maybe a, a break on certain fees that we pay to the municipality. So I'd be asking if we can pull this one off for the 2023 year. Thank you for that. Do you have a response? No. Um, fire chief. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing fire chief. Man of many yeah. hands. Yeah. Fire chief. Uh, for you, by the mayor, two members of council. Uh, we did change the process of how the uh, burn permit was issued. Uh, there was a significant amount of liability on potential liability on the town where the current the way the old process was undertaken. So when we change the process, yes, the resident now goes to the town hall to get the, the permit and the instructions on what to do. And we looked at various municipalities. And um, those municipalities that were doing it this way, uh, also those that were doing it through online, uh, were charging anywhere between fifteen to fifty dollars. So we focused in on halfway twenty five dollars, but um, we do understand the council's concern about uh, the rising costs, and if this was wanting to be. And maybe implemented that further time period. That's we have no issues with that. Thank you for that, Councillor Owen. Yes, so you, Your Worship. Uh, I I have to agree with Councillor Owens. Um, when I got my permit, they came out, they inspected, they made sure I had a hose that would reach it. They made sure I was ex number of feet. They did the whole thing. That I'd be willing to pay for. But to come in and buy a piece of paper that says this is what you got to do, um, when you were getting the whole inspection free before, which I was surprised was free, um, I, it doesn't make sense. But having said that, the, the, the topic I really want to speak on is airport uh, charges. Um, this has come up before in the past that non residents who rent hangar space or space in the airport office uh, do not pay a premium price. Uh, when with all our other services, pretty much, uh, the library, the, the complex, uh, recreation programs pay a premium price because they do not, through their taxes, help support that program. The airport, loses at least $150,000 a year. Um, you can double check me on that, but I believe that's around the right figure. And yet we're not charging a premium price for people that are renting space there um, to store their planes. Their taxes are going elsewhere. They're not coming in to support that airport. Um, so what I would like to see, the rec department uh, charges 20% premium price for non-residents. And I think that could be used as a precedent. And I would like to see that implemented so that hopefully we can get a little bit more recovery off the airport. And it's fairness to the taxpayers that live in town. Thank you for that. It has been noted. Any further comments or additions from council? None noted. I'll have the reading of the motion. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, 
So as per, per the municipal clerk, just a reminder that on May 16th, our next meeting prior to, there will be a public meeting in which members of the Kirtland Lake community will be able to speak on our user fees. And then it will come back on June 6th for further deliberations at this table. So if there is further comments or questions, you can um, bring them forward through the CAO in between time, but we will have further discussions on that June 6th meeting. So that being said, we can have the reading of the motion. So we'll be moved by Councillor Janice Reiner, seconded by Councillor Lod Chaba. We have resolved the report number 2023 CLK9 entitled Proposed Updates to Town of Kirkland Lake User Fees be received. And finally, that a public meeting be held on Tuesday, May 16th at 5 4 p.m. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. At this time, Councillor Owens will take chair as well, again, while I bring forth a motion. Do you want to switch? Right. Yeah. 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 So, considered uh, item seven, the series of most motion, 7.1 Mayor Stacey Whiteford College Tales Development Board of Funding. Um, so I trust that all members of council were able to read the motion brought forward by myself and Councillor Kylie. This idea for the motion came out of discussions I had with Northern College President Dr. Audrey Penner regarding public colleges not being independently included in the March 2023 announced funding for skills training centers. This motion is slightly different than other support motions um, we normally present at this table because if this motion is passed this evening, Kirkland Lake will be the creator of the movement to lobby the provincial government on this issue, being the first community to officially shed light on the need for the province to fund colleges in the area of skill development. So this will start grassroots at the Kirkland Lake level and be passed through other municipalities from here. And comments or questions from council members? Noted. Oh, sorry, through yeah. uh, 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 Mr. Chair. Uh, I fully support this uh, resolution. Ever since the schools basically withdrew the services of uh, shops, uh, the interest in uh, people going into the trades has dropped dramatically. So this is the only point of entry that we really have uh, through the colleges, and it's extremely important. Uh, there's such a, a shortage of uh, uh, members of various trades uh, in the in the province. Uh, so we uh, we're hopeful that uh, this movement will uh, move forward, and uh, most of the colleges will uh, jump on it as well. Thank you. I just want to caution one thing, Councillor uh, Councilor Kyle, you mentioned uh, trades being taken out of school. Hey, trades are not taken out of school. School well, they're not. We have we we have robust trade programs. Uh, I have several students that go on a biannual basis to trade a uh, trade program in Earlton associated to College Boyas. So high schools in Kirkland Lake and throughout the province do have solid and robust uh, Trade program and so well, they they do they correct my, myself in that, but they're not as um, as thorough and as uh, uh, when the, when they had the shops in the schools, um, it was a lot to more interest. I think I'll stay keep this on topic, but I'm a shop teacher and I, I teach it in the school, so we do have again a very robust shop program. So we'll in, in your opinion. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Councillor. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Right. Um, so I just I think um, maybe what Councillor Kylie means is at one time you could go from the high school program into trades, perhaps, and now um, with the specialized training, uh, secondary education is required. No. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Councillor Owen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I I think that for a long time, 
students weren't channeled as much into um, trades. And because they weren't channeled into trades, the trades were considered low tech and a, a lot of students chose to go another route. And I think that's perhaps the issue here. Um, I mean, say I'll, I'll keep it. We'll keep the meeting on topic. And I'm not, I'm not talking specifically. I'm talking globally. Okay, just yeah, to make that clear. Okay. Um, in any case, anything that goes to help Northern College, um, and and perhaps could have Northern College come out a leader in in this area, and they have been a leader, especially when it comes to the welding trades. Uh, this is known as the best school in Canada, so uh, I would certainly support this motion, despite other issues at the table. <laughs> Ready for the sure. Moved by Mayor Stacey White, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley. Whereas colleges provide more than 80% of the in class portion of apprenticeship training in Ontario, and whereas maintaining a strong college system with high quality facilities and cutting edge labs is essential in Ontario, hopes to make real progress closing the skills gap. Um, and we're at Col Ontario colleges work with industry and trade unions to develop a skilled labor force. And whereas public colleges were not independently included in the recently announced funding for skills training centers in March 2023. And whereas colleges are now funding free training centers on their own and funding is needed to support these state of the art trade training centers. And whereas in some areas of the province, colleges are the only training providers and no funds will flow into these regions due to the lack of funding as recently announced in March 2023. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake request the Ministry of Labor, Immigration, Training, and Skills Development reevaluate their trade, their trades training funding approach to include college and funding for skills training. And finally, that this motion be circulated to the Honorable Premier of Ontario, Ministry of Labor, Immigration, Training, and Skills Development. Association of Municipalities of Ontario, which is AMO, Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities, which is Penal, MPP Timiskaming Cochran, and P. Timmins James Bay, and all municipalities within the District of Timiskaming. All in favor? Carried. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owens. I will now reclaim the chair. Item 8.1, bylaw number 23-003. Moved by Councillor Janice Rangers, by Councillor Casey Owens. It resolved that the following bylaw be read the first, second, and third time number to pass signed by the Mayor and Municipal Clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed there too. Bylaw number 23033 being a bylaw to appoint a fire chief for the corporation of the town of Kirkland. All in favor? Do Opposed? <laughs> None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item? Sure. I'm going to make some comments. Um, so uh, on May the 8th, Mr. Earl Griff will undertake the duties of fire chief. We're very excited to have Mr. Greg on board. Uh, Earl comes from, right now he's the president of fire chief in Marathon, and he has experience also in the of Bay, uh, Georgian Bay, Rama Fire Department, and also Aurelia. So Mr. Greg has well over 20 years experience in the field, and uh, we look forward to welcoming, welcoming Earl on May the 8th. Uh, we'll, he will begin to choose. Thank you, uh, Mr. Schmidt. Item number nine, questions from council to staff. There was none submitted. Item number 10, notice of motion. None noted at the table this evening. Item number 11, councillors reports, updates from members of council. Councillor Owen. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I got to find my right notes here. I don't want to read back what we just said. Um, 
I just wanted to uh, speak on this being uh, Canadian Mental Health Week. I've uh, never kept it a secret. Uh, in fact, I shared some of my struggles with mental health when I was a reporter. Um, and as well, um, my struggles with alcohol. Uh, addiction to me is also part of the mental health program and it's now being recognized as that. And I will say, that stigma plays a big role in people not getting help. Um, I know when I first went to CMHA, I would take my, I was still working at the time, I was a working reporter. I would take my camera bag with me. So if people saw me going in the door, they would think that I was going in to do a story. Um, so sometimes the stigma is external from the community back to the person. And sometimes it's internal, the person worrying about, you know, what are people going to think of me? You know, I have a high profile in the community and they're going to see me going into this place. So there's still work to be done on the stigma. I think less so on the mental health side, more so on the addiction side. And um, I hope that uh, the people will realize that Mental illness is an illness. Addiction is an illness. It's an illness of the brain. And it requires treatment. It's not a choice. It's not a choice. Certain people seem predisposed to addiction or to certain mental illnesses. And there should be no shame on them admitting it, standing tall and saying, hey, you know what? I'm a little off today. I'm having a bad day. And I've been very fortunate in that the people I've worked with have been very understanding, but it's not that way for a lot of people. So I just ask people to, to show people with addiction and mental health issues a little respect and compassion because they're sick. And when you're sick with a physical disease, you go to the hospital, there's no shame. So when you're sick with a mental illness or an addiction and you seek help, there should be no shame. You should be patting them on the back for trying to get well. Um, <clears throat> also, <clears throat> this, uh, last week, uh, Councillor Kylie and myself <clears throat> attended a DSAB meeting and the audit was presented and they had a clean audit. Um, the one thing that kind of saw, uh, kind of shocked me was the size of the surplus that they had from the year before. Um, I can't remember the original figure, but when you take out, and our treasurer will understand this, when you take out the uncompleted projects and the other things that are in the rules of accounting, um, they still have a surplus of over $400,000, which I find, uh, very, very healthy. Um, so that's something that uh, I will be keeping an eye on as we go down the road to see what the surplus is next year. Um, because I want I want DSAD to have enough money to, to provide all the programs that it's supposed to provide. But at the same time, I don't want uh, the communities to be paying more into DSAB than what they should be. And if if you're going to keep getting surpluses like that, then, you know, it says to me that communities could afford to pay less. We also had a, a very good overview of their human resources program. It was uh, very warm and fuzzy. In fact, I almost wanted to put up my hand and resign from the board and apply for a job. Uh, but I must give DSAP credit. They do not have a big turnover of employees. Um, so, what their HR person was presenting obviously works. Um, you know, people seem to be quite happy to work there and and, and the management people that are coming to meetings and, and that have all, uh, it seems to be a really, a really good place to work. So that was that was nice to hear. The downside of that is they want a uh, counselor Kai and me to take a bunch of these uh, uh, courses, online courses and despite Councillor Kiley's uh, objections, it looks like we're going to have to do them. So 
Well, actually, <laughs> Councillor Kiley, I mean, he, he, he's going to get off, but yeah, and we all know how I love those online courses. <laughs> um, Saturday, <clears throat> uh, Mayor White and myself uh, took part in the Lions Parade. Uh, which is pretty amazing because I had to be up and down there for nine o'clock on a Saturday morning. Originally, we were supposed to walk from Main Street to uh, Northern College, but due to the weather, we rode, uh, which meant that my wife also took part in the parade, but she was representing the retired employees of Kirkland Lake. Um, it was a pretty amazing uh, day. We also attended their luncheon, and there was 200 plus lions in town a lot of them with their spouses and, and that. And the feedback that we got from line members was really a, a really strong endorsement of Kirk and Lake. They commented on how clean the downtown area was. They commented on how the people in the hospitality industry, like the, the restaurants and, and, and the motels, how they were uh, so helpful and friendly and, and uh, they were, they were really impressed with people in Kirkland Lake. And um, so that convention, like, you know, that's major input in their economy as well. So, and that was very enjoyable. The mayor gave a very nice uh, talk at the luncheon. I fell asleep during, no, the mayor gave a very good talk at the luncheon and the Lions uh, seemed to genuinely appreciate the fact that the town council was represented. Um, uh, we also had another school tour, which the mayor and myself took part in. It was from Sacred Heart. Uh, it was one of the senior grades of Sacred Heart, and uh, boy, they're a challenge. <laughs> um, I thought they'd get my humor, but they didn't. We could have used the Casey, I uh, could have used Councillor Owens, I think, uh, to help us out with this one. Um, it was an interesting experience to say the least, but the kids paid attention and, and they learned. And uh, I, I think uh, it's a good thing to get them interested. So even though if they're not gonna show their interest at that age, but that's okay. And uh, finally, I just wanna remind everybody that uh, this is Mile Cookie Week and the proceeds from that are going to St. Jerome School, I believe for a new, new uh, playground. So I'd like to encourage everybody to support uh, St. Jerome and put on a few pounds and <laughs> go buy tons of smile cookies. So with that, I'll smile and say thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen, Councillor Kiling. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I attended the uh, flag raising for the community <laughs> living along with the uh, Mayor Stacy. Uh, Again, I congratulate them on their 76th year of uh, membership in, in this group. Uh, I think they were the founding members in the province, if I recall correctly, uh, and a great uh, contribution to the community. Um, just further to the DSAB meeting that Rick and I attended, I, the $400,000 uh, surplus was a bit of a surprise. I believe a portion of it, a small portion of it, uh, was uh, some of the COVID funding that wasn't used up, but uh, certainly uh, 400000 added into our budget uh, is not uh, a great way of handling uh, uh, the expense to the community. So Rick and I will certainly uh, follow that up. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further from members of council? Okay. Since our last meeting, oh, sure. um, oh Councillor Shaba. Yeah, just turn my mic on. Sorry, I got planes landing here every five five minutes. Um, okay, I this is uh, through you, uh, uh, Madam Chair, to the clerk. I don't know if this is an oversight or not. The minutes of the Kirkland Lake Police Services Board that we have is for February the 8th. Uh, that's not the latest one. Um, I think we reported on this one already. Um, to you, Madam Mayor, to all council and specifically to Councilor Shaba. Um, the, the minutes 
were not presented to council as of yet because they were not signed okay. uh, yeah. at the last police services board meeting, which was in April. They uh, the board passed the April minutes, therefore they were presented to council for uh, receipt. Okay. The minutes in April will not be uh, presented to council for receipt until uh, the next meeting of the police services board, uh, which is July. So it'll probably uh, be coming to council around that time. Okay, I'll defer my report to then. Thank you. Okay. Uh, since our last meeting, dated April eighteenth, uh, uh, the office of the mayor has met with members of the community regarding Canada Day celebration and the possibility of joining forces with local community groups, the Rotary and the Lions Club. We met with the mayor of Horn Payne via Zoom regarding community partnership opportunities and the Now Caucus. The 2SLGBTQ Steering Committee um, was meeting was attended in which funding opportunities for the administrative position was discussed. The group may be requesting a delegation with municipalities in the district to discuss the same in the future. Through staff in the Developmental Services Department, Clerk, CAO and Fire Department, a nearly four-year-old issue regarding an address 911 fire number was resolved. We had an introdu introductory meeting with MPP Charlie Angus through the staff at the Museum of Northern History. Visual aids for town hall school tours were acquired, including photos of Ann Shipley, Frank Rainford, Bob Price, members of council sporting the blazers in the Kirkland Lake Tartans, and finally, Joe, Ma Joe Mavernack, the mayor responsible for the addition of samples from local mines being added to the chain of office in 1989. We're hoping that these visual aids will assist interest in the tours. Um, I spoke at the Legion Convention and Memorial Banquet Dinner on behalf of the town of Kirkland Lake. I attended the library board meeting in which the status report of the children's department refresh project was given, as well as the 2022 annual report um, all members of council and CAO have received a copy of this, and I put one downstairs for members of the public in the lobby. On Monday, April 24th, I attended the art exhibit at the museum put on by Central School, in which students use a variety of mediums to depict eyes of animals and other creatures. This is an incredible community partnership with the school that hasn't occurred in recent history and the children should be certainly proud of themselves. The Economic Development Committee resulted in three of those reports that we received this evening. Yesterday, I read the proclamation for the flag raising at Community Living Month, which was attended by Councillor Kylie. The Chamber of Commerce meeting this afternoon, in which local statistics about businesses in Kirkland Lake were presented from the Far Northeast Training Board. Interesting to note, as of June 2022, there were 461 businesses in Kirkland Lake, 57.5 of which had zero employees. So a large portion of our community business is actually mom and pop operations. The industry with the most significant increase in total employment was healthcare and social assistance. In 2021, there were 3,455 3, individuals employed in Kirkland Lake, 45.7 were female and 54.3 were male. May 6th to 14th is Community Cleanup Week. Garbage bags can be picked up at the complex May 5th to the 14th, and these bags can be disposed of in designated bins behind the complex building at 55 Allen Avenue. The acceptable items for those bins are trash and litter found outside that can fit in those supply garbage bags. Uh, also, the Myers Memorial and our welcome gateway signs on either side of our community will be lit green for the coronation of King Charles III during the weekend of the 6th as well. And that is my report. I will have many 
Motion read, please. Mm -hmm. Is not prepared. Is moved by Councillor Owens, seconded by Councillor Owen. Be it resolved that the verbal reports of Council be received. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. I don't hear it unanimous. Additional information there is one additional uh, health and safety issue that came to um, us via the clerk. The clerk has recirculated the notice with DSAV officials and to Miskaming District clerks. This is uh, a flood watch. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, Timmins Kirkle Lake District, is advising area residents that a flood watch, it watch is in effect for the district until Friday, May 12, 2023. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, Timmins Kirkle Lake, is advising the area residents Residents in Kirkland Lake and surrounding area of the district should exercise special caution around rivers and streams. Spring temperatures along with forecasted precipitation throughout the district are expected to increase melting, resulting in increased runoff and increased levels and flows. Please alert any children under your care uh, to these possible dangers and supervise their activities. Flooding may occur in low-lying areas that are prone to flooding. The ministry is closely monitoring the weather and developing watershed conditions. Further updates will be issued as appropriate. And for more information, please visit uh, the, the website directly. So that is an unexpected addition. <clears throat> and please be aware of those um, dangers in our community. Item number 12.1 is the following proclamation. Whereas in 1985, the federal government, along with Canadian Nurses Association, established the second week of May as National Nursing Week to recognize the dedication and vital contributions that generations of nurses have made to the healthcare system. And whereas nurses help citizens achieve optimal health and wellness by promoting health, preventing illness, and providing direct care across all healthcare sectors, including the front lines in hospitals, primary care centers, long-term care, public health in the community sector, and education and research. And whereas this National Nursing Week theme, Our Nurses, Our Future, recognizes the courage and commitment all nurses, including RNs, RPNs, nurse practitioners, and PSWs show in a patient's health care journey to tirelessly provide care and compassion, especially over the past three years during the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the town of Kirkland Lake is dedicated to the health and well-being of its community members. Now, therefore, I, Stacy White, mayor of the town of Kirkland Lake, do hereby proclaim May 8th to the 14th, 2023, as National Nursing Week. Item number 12.2 is the following proclamation. Whereas the third week in May of each year is recognized across North America as Paramedic Services Week by municipalities, paramedic organizations and associations, as well as other levels of government. And whereas Paramedic Service Week is May 21st to the 27th, 2023. And whereas the District of Temiskaming Social Service and Administration Board Emergency Medical Services serve the people of the district every day. We take the opportunity to recognize the exceptional service that they provide from their prompt and compassionate response to our citizens in urgent need to their supporting role of community paramedics. And whereas paramedics dedicate their lives to public service and their skills often make the difference when community members are at their most vulnerable. And whereas access to the quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness, illness or injury. And whereas the corporation of the town of Kirkland Lake wishes to recognize the important contribution of the 63 part-time and full-time paramedics who work 
of the three bases across the district, as well as recognize the paramedics across Canada. And whereas Kirkland Lake residents and members of this community are urged to recognize the vital contributions provided by all paramedics in the district of Temiskaming. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Stacey White, Mayor of the Town of Kirkland Lake, do hereby proclaim May 21st to the 27th, 2023, as Paramedic Services Week. And I will have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Lod Chava, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley. Be it resolved that Council sanction the proclamations for National Nursing Week and Paramedic Services Week in the Town of Kirkland Lake. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimously. We'll now take a 10 minute resort, recess in between opening and closed session. Okay, we will now reconvene to open session. Okay. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Janice Ranger. Be it resolved that Council reconvene in open session at 7 11 p.m. All in favor? No opposed. I am carried unanimous. Any declaration of pecuniary interest from in camera? None was noted. Noted. Item number 14, matters from closed session. Item 14.1, request to purchase mining claim 164780 BPIN 1228-1875. Okay, I'm just going to make some minor amendments to that. It's part of mining claim 16478. And it's pin 61228-1875. Uh, moved by Councillor Patrick Kiley, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens. It resolved that report number 2023-DEB21 entitled Request to Purchase Part of Mining Claim 16478 being pin 61228-1875 be received. And that Council declare part of mining claim 16478 being pin 61228-1875 as surplus land. And that council approved the sale of the part of the mining claim 16478 being pin 61228 to Hydro One Networks Inc. for the price of $39,200. And that council authorized Mayor Municipal Clerk to execute the offer to purchase and all appropriate sale documents as may be required. And finally, that council authorized the bylaw of the sale of property be given three readings at an upcoming meeting. All in favor? No opposed. Item carried unanimous. Item number 14.2, Supplemental Committee of Council Public Appointment. Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen, be it resolved that the following individual be appointed to the Kirkland Lake Economic Development Committee for the year 2023 and this term of council, Sarah Holder. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item number 15, 15.1, bylaw number 23034. Moved by Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Dolly Dykins. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read first, second, and third time. Number passed signed by the Mayor Municipal Clerk and the seal of the corporation be fixed there too. Bylaw number 2334 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of Council held its meeting held Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023. All in favor? All in favor? No opposed. Item carried unanimous. Number 16, adjournment. Moved by Councillor Patrick Kiley, seconded by Councillor La Chava. It resolved that this regular meeting of Council do now adjourn at 7 4 10 All in favor? No opposed. Noted. Item carried unanimous. Thank you, everyone. No.